Hello, welcome to the Australian Leadership Project. Today, we're delighted to be interviewing Peter Khalil, the Federal Member of Parliament for the seat of Wills. Peter was elected to the Parliament last year, and we're delighted that he's joining us today to share his reflections on Australian leadership. Peter, from your perspective, what are the unique qualities of Australian leadership? I think what's unique about Australian leadership uh, is we have a very special strain of larrikinism, anti-authoritarianism, and even the leaders themselves tend to dis demonstrate this in different ways. Um, we've had larrikins, we've had uh, humorous types of leaders um, who use humour very, very well. Um, but they also, in some respects, and this is, you know, throughout our history, have themselves uh, challenged authority in some respects in the way they go about it. Um, also, I think the really important uh, part of our uniqueness, well, Australian leadership, is that people tend to um, mix it in the street. So you could have, you know, John Howard walking down the street or Bob Hawke walking down the street and people will say, g'day Bob or g'day John or whatever it might be. You know, you have all these wonderful pictures of Bob, you know, drinking a, a beer at the cricket or whatever it might be. We're able, I think, in Australia to connect with our leaders in very, very different ways than, than you would see in, in the US. I remember when I was in the US and I testified before the, the US Senate Foreign Relations Committee, and I had Barack Obama there, a, senator, a young senator, and Senator Joe Biden. And at the end, I was sort of mixing with some of the senators and I made the mistake of saying something like, oh, Joe, what do you think of this? And someone tapped me on the shoulder and said, you've got to say Senator Biden. Um, so I think in Australia it would have just been Joe or John or Bob or whatever, or Peter. Um, and, and that's something special about Australia. And I hope we never lose that, the ability for Australian political leaders to be able to, to connect with uh, people in the street and, and uh, take an earful, uh, as well as give some back. Peter, what do Australians want of their leaders? I think Australians want, they thirst for conviction. That's the big C word uh, in Australian leadership. Uh, and I think the Australian leaders who have been most successful have shown conviction. They've, they've, they've got a set of values, a set of beliefs, uh, they have a vision um, and they go about implementing that. Now, a lot of Australians, the punters will be like, well, I might not agree with him or her, but at least they, they have that conviction, they have that belief. And a lot of people didn't agree with a, with a lot of what Bob Hawke did or John Howard or Paul Keating, um, but they respected the fact that they had a real conviction, uh, a real world vision, if you like, a vision for Australia, a vision for our place in the world. Um, and, and they went about trying to implement that. Uh, and they didn't waver um, based on the polls. They actually took people with them. Um, and sometimes they were unpopular uh, positions, but they truly believed in them. Uh, and they showed genuine leadership by going forward with them and bringing people with them, bringing the public with them on these issues. So I think what Australians really want is conviction, that kind of uh, certainty uh, and that the strength of a leader to be able to say, this is the vision I have uh, for this country and this is what I think we need to do uh, for this country. You might not agree with everything, um, but there's a degree of respect there uh, for the fact that that leader uh, has that vision. So I think that's one of the most uh, important things and one of the things that Australians really, really want in their leaders. Peter? Please share with us your favourite stories of Australian leadership. Well, there was a time when I was working at, as a foreign policy advisor for, for the former PM, and, um, and there was a policy about um, having uh, Japanese Defence Forces do exercises in Australia for the first time since World War II. And I thought out of respect it would be important to, to, to contact you know, people in the RSL and sort of veterans. And I, and I also reached out to Tom Uren, who was a former minister uh, in the Whitlam government, uh, some people might remember him in that space, but obviously it was, it was a long time ago. And Tom had been um, uh, a prisoner of war, the Japanese, um, had gone through some horrific experiences at POW uh, during World War II. Uh, and I said, Tom, you know, I'm just letting you know that we're, we're thinking about doing this. I know there's some real sensitivities about having Japanese Defence Forces um, do exercises in Australia, but it's something that uh, is a policy that we think is in the national interest. And it was just remarkable... He, 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 the way he uh, talked to me about it, he, he obviously related some of the, the horrible things that he and many other thousands of Australian POWs had gone through. But the union said it was, and this was a remarkable thing, he said, look, um, I'll never 
uh, forget, will never forgive, but you, you and the government need to do what is in the best interests of Australia. And if that is genuinely in our best interests, and you know, Australian forces working with Japanese forces on humanitarian relief and disaster relief and so on, then you should go ahead. And I thought that was a very brave thing to do at you know, his age too, in his, in his late 80s, I think early 90s. Um, so that was a really great example um, of, of leadership in a, in a different type of way. Um, there's lots of other examples. One, uh, one I uh, met with the former um, Prime Minister Bob Hawke, one of our great Prime Ministers um, and the former MP for Wills, which I now have the honour of representing uh, his, his electorate. Um, and I asked him, of all the things that you know, you've done in your career, what's, a, what's one that didn't really get that much attention, um, that wasn't you know, front and centre you know, with all the great legacy that you've left behind? And, and he said um, what he was most proud of was uh, when he started as Prime Minister, around 30% of students finished Year 12. Uh, but because of policies that he put in place, uh, by the end of his term as Prime Minister, like nine odd years later, it had actually tripled to over 90%. So he left that, he bequeathed that to, to Australians, uh, the structures, if you like, so that um, over no, almost 90% of uh, students could actually finish high school, whereas when he started, it was only a third. Uh, so that, that was a wonderful thing as well. Uh, another great example of leadership, and it's not always the politicians and the sort of ministers and MPs and, and um, PMs and all that. Uh, sometimes it's just basic uh, basic leadership at a very local level, a grassroots level. Uh, one good example is a, a wonderful woman who lives in a housing commission or public housing in my, in my electorate. Um, and she came and brought together a whole uh, bunch of residents to come and visit me in the office here as an MP. Uh, they weren't being listened to. They, they'd tried talking to the police about some of the, the security issues, the crime issues at the housing commission. Uh, they tried talking to the housing authority uh, they just weren't getting anywhere. They didn't feel that their voices were being heard. So she took, um, you know, the action into her own hands. She organised uh, a group of residents. They came as a delegation to my office. Uh, they were at their sort of wits' end, if you like, because of the dr the drug dealing that was going on in the uh, in the flats in the housing commission flats. Um, and I thought it was a very brave thing to do, but also it showed g sort of a, a genuine gritty type of leadership to say, you know, let's take action into our own hands. Let's make this happen. And um, uh, I grew up in a housing commission myself, so I know how difficult it is, um, you know, growing up tough that way. And, and, and I was really, really touched by um, what they were going through. And um, subsequent to that, we, we ended up having a big uh, residence meeting where I went as the federal MP to the um, housing commission, brought the senior sergeant with me uh, from the police, a couple of uh, uh, people from the housing authority, to really engage with the residents and, and make sure that their voices are heard. But if it wasn't for that woman, her name's Judith, uh, her, the, the leadership that she showed, and there were others in the group too that showed similar types of leadership, um, to organise organize their community, organise their neighbours, organise their, their, their friends to actually take some political action, um, there wouldn't have been these subsequent uh, actions taken to actually try and uh, resolve some of their issues. And now, that's, thankfully, that's happening. So that's a kind of a wonderful leadership at the grassroots level that I, I've just discovered uh, in my electorate. And, and there are many, many other stories like that as well. Well, that's all for today. Thanks to Peter and his staff um, for taking the time with us today. And we'd like to welcome each and every one of you to join us on the Australian Leadership Project and to share your insights and wisdom. Please come to the website at www.australianleadership.com.